So ask yourself the question. People who know you, would they know you as someone who trusts God, who obeys God, someone who attempts to walk in His will, or do they just know you as a person who sort of just does whatever comes naturally and you want to be happy and you want to be successful and you want to fit into the ways of the world? God did not allow you to be born just to do any old thing you wanted to do. That wasn't His plan. Watch carefully as the Apostle John defines darkness in his context. Darkness comes in a lot of different ways, but what John's talking about here is understanding the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you will acknowledge that work and agree with what the Holy Ghost is doing in your life, you won't walk in darkness. Welcome to Dig In Deeper, a simple Bible study where we dig deeper into the Word of God. Thank you for joining me. I am your host, Billy Ray Parrish. And today's study will take place in Genesis chapter 25. On our last program, we dug into Genesis chapter 24. Chapter 25 is made up of 34 verses and begins with verse 1. Then again, Abraham took a wife and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And Jokshan begot Sheba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, and Latushim, and Lumim. And the sons of Midian Ephah, and Ephor, and Hanak, and Abathah, and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts, and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, an hundred threescore and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost, and died in a good old age, an old man, and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron the son of Zohar the Hittite, which is before Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Hate. There was Abraham buried, and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelt by the well Lahiroi. Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian. Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham, and these are the names of the sons of Ishmael. By their names, according to their generations, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, and Kedar, and Adbeel, and Mibsam, and Mishma, and Duma, and Masa, Hadar. And Tima, Jatur, Naphish, and Kadima, these are the sons of Ishmael. And these are their names, by their towns. And by their castles twelve princes according to their nations. And these are the years of the life of Ishmael, an hundred and thirty and seven years. And he gave up the ghost and died, and was gathered unto his people. And they dwelt from Havilah unto Shur, that is before Egypt, as thou goest toward Assyria. And he died in the presence of all his brethren. And these are the generations of Isaac. Abraham's son, Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. 
And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field. And he was faint, and Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he sware unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up. And went his way, thus Esau despised his birthright. Chapter 25 opens with Abraham taking another wife, Keturah. She did not just bring comfort to Abraham, but she also provided him with six more children. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. This is another sign of God keeping his promise to make many nations from Abraham. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dedan. Dedan fathered Ashurim, Latushim, and Lumim. Midian's sons were Ephah, Ephor, Hanak, Abida, and Elda, but dispute Abraham having children from Keturah. Scripture is clear that the covenant made from God to Abraham is still through Isaac. And here we see everything being left to Isaac regardless of who was born to Abraham. Maybe this can be seen like a will. And while Isaac got much of Abraham's estate, the other children did get some stuff. And this probably included Hagar and Ishmael. Abraham lived a long life, 175 years, which is double what average expectancy is today. Abraham's life was very fascinating. And he is one of the most influential figures in history, not just Christian history, but three different works religions Christian, Islam, Judaism. But in the last days of his life, he moved a lot and lived in tents, but he would live to see the birth of his grandchildren. We are told Abraham was buried in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron the son of Zohar, the Hittite by both Isaac and Ishmael. He was buried with his wife, Sarah. After Abraham's death, Isaac settled at Beer Lahai Roy, which is the place where Hagar heard from. The Lord. After Abraham's death, it would take time for the genealogies of Abraham's sons. And this what's to come next. The sons of Ishmael, named in the order of their birth, Nebaioth. The firstborn of Ishmael and Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jatur, Naphish, and Kadima. Verses 13, 14, and 15 lists the twelve sons of Ishmael by birth order. Hagar was promised by God that Ishmael would father twelve princes. The twelve tribes of Ishmael's sons may have been a formidable force in the region. Fifty years after the death of Abraham, Ishmael dies at the age of 137 years of age. Ishmael's twelve sons made up twelve groups, which settled primarily in the region to the east of the land that would become Israel, and this fulfills a promise God made to Hagar, Ishmael's mother. Before they were evicted from Abraham's family, God vowed to make Ishmael and his offspring successful. Isaac married Rebekah when he was forty, about thirty-five years 
before the death of Abraham. We learn that Rebekah was barren, so Isaac prays to God about this. And she eventually becomes pregnant. But we're not sure how much time passed between Isaac's prayer and Rebekah's pregnancy, but we do learn that Isaac was 60 when his sons are eventually born. Based on the math, Isaac 40 at the time of marriage. And he's 60 when he becomes a dad. They were childless for about 20 years. We are told that when Rebecca is pregnant, the kids are struggling against each other. This will also be a description of things to come. Rebecca doesn't know what's going on, but she knows something isn't right. She prays and is given an answer in poetic form, prophecy to come, in the form of children of nations. When she gives birth, she does so to twins, Esau and Jacob. Esau is born red and hairy, but Jacob is not, at least compared to his brother, and comes out holding to his brother's heel. Jacob can mean may God protect or reward, or unfortunately for Esau it can also mean usurper. The text fast forwards to the children aging with Esau being a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man, dwelling in tents, while Isaac and Rebekah loved both of their children. It appears that they have favored one. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. The rest of the chapter paints a better picture of their personalities. For example, Jacob is cooking stew and Esau is in the field and comes in exhausted and asks for stew. The two may be different in personality and behavior, but both seem to have attitudes as Jacob demands Esau sell his birthright to him. It doesn't appear that Esau took this seriously enough and claims he's about to die or starve to death. The birthright often entitled the firstborn to a double share of the inheritance. Jacob took advantage of Esau's hunger, which he would swear away his oath. But Esau probably didn't realize Jacob was serious. We end with an explanation that Esau despised his birthright, and he did not care or protect it like he should have. Charles Spurgeon explains how difficult of a text chapter 20 is, labeling it terrible. He adds in a sermon that I shall now endeavor, by the help of the Holy Spirit, to throw the light of God's word upon this great doctrine of divine sovereignty and give you what I think to be a scriptural statement of the fact that some men are chosen. Other men are left the great fact that is declared in this text, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. It is a terrible text, and I will be honest with it if I can. One man says the word hate does not mean hate, it means love less. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I loved less. It may be so, but I don't believe it is. At any rate, it says hate here. And until you give me another version of the Bible, I shall keep to this one. I believe that the term is correctly and properly translated that the word hate is not stronger than the original. But even if it be a little stronger, it is nearer the mark than the other translation, which is offered to us in those meaningless words love less. I like to take it and let it stand just as it is. The fact is, God loved Jacob. And he did not love Esau, he did choose Jacob. But he did not choose Esau, he did bless Jacob. But he never blessed Esau, his mercy followed Jacob all the way of his life, even to the last. But his mercy never followed Esau, he permitted him still to go on in his sins. And to prove that dreadful truth, Esau have I hated. End quote. Take each scripture in context and be careful not to add or take away. We have reached the end of our Bible study today for Genesis chapter 25. We have experienced many firsts and historical events in the first 23 chapters of Genesis, so there is no telling what. The next studies will reveal so join us next time for our Bible study here on Digging Deeper as we simply dig deeper into the Word of God. 
I am your host, Billy Ray Parrish, and until next time, thank you for joining us. Stay safe and God bless. Esau is born red and hairy, but Jacob is not, at least compared to his brother, and comes out holding to his brother's heel. Jacob can mean may God protect or reward, or unfortunately for Esau it can also mean usurper. The text fast forwards to the children aging with Esau being a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents, while Isaac and Rebekah loved both of their children. It appears that they have favored one. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. The rest of the chapter paints a better picture of their personalities. For example, Jacob is cooking stew and Esau is in the field and comes in exhausted and asks for stew. The two may be different in personality and behavior, but both seem to have attitudes as Jacob demands Esau sell his birthright to him. It doesn't appear that Esau took this seriously enough and claims he's about to die or starve to death. The birthright often entitled the firstborn to a double share of the inheritance. Jacob took advantage of Esau's hunger, which he would swear away his oath. But Esau probably didn't realize Jacob was serious. We end with an explanation that Esau despised his birthright, and he did not care or protect it like he should have. Charles Spurgeon explains how difficult of a text chapter 20 is, labeling it terrible. He adds in a sermon that I shall now endeavor, by the help of the Holy Spirit, to throw the light of God's word upon this great doctrine of divine sovereignty, and give you what I think to be a scriptural statement of the fact that some men are chosen. Other men are left the great fact that is declared in this text Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. It is a terrible text, and I will be honest with it if I can. One man says the word hate does not mean hate, it means love less. Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I loved less. It may be so, but I don't believe it is. At any rate, it says hate here. And until you give me another version of the Bible, I shall keep to this one. I believe that the term is correctly and properly translated that the word hate is not stronger than the original. But even if it be a little stronger, it is nearer the mark than the other translation, which is offered to us in those meaningless words love less. I like to take it and let it stand just as it is. The fact is, God loved Jacob. And he did not love Esau, he did choose Jacob. But he did not choose Esau, he did bless Jacob. But he never blessed Esau. His mercy followed Jacob all the way of his life, even to the last. But his mercy never followed Esau. He permitted him still to go on in his sins. And to prove that dreadful truth, Esau have I hated. End quote. Take each scripture in context, and be careful not to add or take away. We have reached the end of our Bible study today, for Genesis chapter 25. We have experienced many firsts and historical events in the first 25 chapters of Genesis, so there is no telling what the next studies will reveal, so join us next time for our Bible study here on Digging Deeper as we simply dig deeper into the Word of God. I am your host, Billy Ray Parrish, and until next time, thank you for joining us. Stay safe and God bless.